Sunday morning New Hope FTC worship experience. And this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, anybody excited about being alive on today? Anybody excited about being able to breathe on today? Anybody excited about having the activity of your limbs? Listen, we take so much for granted. We take living for granted. We take breathing for granted. But I don't. I come to give God all the praise. I come to give him the highest praise, which is hallelujah. God, I thank you. So come on in. Come on in. Let's get ready to hear what thus saith the Lord. Invite somebody in your house to join you. Call your brother or your sister. Tag them to this. And tell them, come on and hear what thus saith the Lord from your girl, Pastor Stacy, on this morning. Listen, we're going to talk about don't get it twisted. Yes, you heard me I said, don't get it twisted. And you see Pastor got on her jogging suit today because I'm ready to go to work. I got an assignment today just for you. Just for you. God has given me a word to encourage my brothers and sisters on today to let them know, don't get it twisted. No matter what happened in the past, I'm not my past. I'm not who I used to be. I don't do what I used to do. So you can't hold me to what I used to do. Not on today. Not on today. Come on, somebody. Church time. Hashtag church time. Hashtag get ready. Hashtag don't get it twisted. Come on, tag your brothers and sisters into this because I don't want them to miss it. I'm so excited. Woo! Sister Shanika always say, Pastor, don't start on 10. Don't start on 10. So I'm going to try to woo, rewind. Woo. Pull back a little bit. Y'all ready? Let's get our Bibles. And we're going to go to Haggai. Yes, Haggai chapter 2. Starting at the ninth verse. Y'all know I'm a New Testament preacher. But God has been really dealing with me in the Old Testament. Taking us back. And listen. God's word is God's word. Whether we find it in the Old Testament or New Testament. The people be talking about the lost books of the Bible. Listen, I'm trying to work on the 66 that we know about. Not nothing that somebody else is trying to find. Alright, so let's get your words together. Your, your tablet, your paper Bible, however you got it. So that you can read alone. And I hope that some of you are still using your paper Bible. I do. I still highlight and write little notes in there. So, if you got your Bibles, let's begin reading Haggai, the second chapter, beginning at the seventh verse. We're going to do verses seven and nine. And let me give you a little background. The book of Haggai is a very powerful book. It's a little book. It's the shortest book in the Old Testament. It only got two chapters. So, if you flip too fast, you might pass it. Two chapters and 38 verses. And this message is really simple. It's talking about how God's people returned from exile when they lived in Jerusalem for a number of years, but the temple was still all messed up and ruined. And the message urges the people to rebuild it. And the Lord promised prosperity and peace in the future of his renewed people. Has God promised you anything? Yeah. I know he promised us new hope. He promised us that he was going to give us prosperity and he was going to give us peace as we rebuild. Corona came and changed the game, but we still remain faithful. We still held on to the promises of God, which is yea and amen, yeah. and we're going to rebuild and be bigger and better than ever. Amen? So, so let us show, let me show you how it applies to you. We're moving from just going to church, you know, just going in the building, to get it saved, and we're trying to move into kingdom. We're not just doing church work no more. We're, we want to do kingdom work and kingdom building. And in this process, there's still some work that needs to be done, right? Why I say don't get it twisted? Because some of us got stuck on trying to get it together by ourselves. You ever met that individual, your family member or friend that be like, oh, I'm going to come to the Lord when I get myself together. Um, I'm going to come to church when I get myself right. You know, because I don't want to be a hypocrite. Soon as I stop sinning, 
That's when I'm going to come. Listen, you can't do it on your own. God ain't looking for perfection. God ain't waiting for you to stop doing what you're doing before you come. He said, come as you are. People get it twisted when they think come as you are mean just what you're wearing. No, he's talking about your heart. He's talking about your mind. He wants you to come just as you are. And we got to determine what our spiritual success is going to be, not by what people see, not how people see us, but by sitting back and letting God change us, letting God do the work in us. Listen, the Bible says that we can't be lukewarm. What do you mean lukewarm? That means not hot, not cold, but in Revelation 3 and 16, how the Lord will spit you out. Yes, for being lukewarm. It's not that you're in a backslidden state. It's not that you're just chilling, not that you're just working, not that you don't have faith, but you just in that, 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 that middle period, that, that warm period, that God wants to change us, that God needs to move us. I left my Bible, Jesus. Pastor, can you get Haggai 2, 7 and 9 for me? And we're going to read the word, but let me go ahead, go on until Pastor Harry gets that for us. So, Haggai what? Haggai chapter 2, verse 7 and 9. I said all that and didn't even bring my tablet up here with me, but that's all right. I got you. Uh, you want to read for me? Yes. All right, read loud and strong for me, Pastor. Haggai 2, 7 and 9. 7 verse says, I will shake all nations. They shall come to desire all nations, and I will fill this temple with this glory. Temple. This temple. Say of the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine. The silver is mine. The gold is the mine. The gold is mine. Says the Lord of hosts. Yes, God. You want to read the next one? No, no, that's it. God say all of this is mine and he's going to refill the house with his glory. So new hope, listen, God is going to refill the house with his glory. All of this belongs to him. So we don't have to worry about how we're going to do it, how we're going to fix it. I'm talking about the physical temple, and I'm talking about this flesh temple, this temple right here. Yes, the first house was filled with his glory, and it was good. They had everything that they wanted, everything that they needed, yeah. but that particular time, in that particular point. But in the process, somebody say process. Process. In the process of working on you, something happened. You got interrupted. Some stuff came. Some opposition came. You heard God tell you to keep praying. You heard God tell you to keep praising, to keep moving, to keep working until your temple was complete. But in God's timing, he will rise. He will raise you up for the appointed time and for, for a specific reason, for specific assignment yes for a specific mission God got an assignment and a mission and a season just for you so in this time in this mission is for God to get the glory out of your life not you not how much education you have not how much money you have not how big your house is not how big your church is not how many congregation members you have but for God to get the glory out of you out of yes. this temple yes. out of this flesh temple yes. so you talking about what temple you talking about you talking about our temple no I'm talking about your body that's yes. the temple I'm talking about yes. listen first Corinthians 6 and 19 says know that your body is not your own it is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is you which you have of God and you are not your own. So you can't do what you want with your body because your body is not your own. It belongs to God. Your body is a temple. Oh my God, could you imagine how better off we would be if we treated our bodies like it was a temple? Wow. Listen, some of us are eating ourselves to death. We blaming stuff on the devil and it ain't the devil was you. You know if you're an overcomer of diabetes, you ain't supposed to be eating cakes and pies and Pepsis. It ain't the devil is you. If you know you have high blood pressure. You ain't supposed to be eating pig feet and hog moths. It ain't the devil with you. Treat your body as if it was a temple. Come on, Pastor. 
my God, my God. Romans 12 and 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren and sistren, I'm adding my own little twist to it, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, living. holy, oh. acceptable yeah. unto God, yeah. which is your reasonable service. Yeah. So how can you present your body as a living sacrifice to God? By not putting drugs into it, by not doing things to your body that's ungodly, by not doing things to your body that's unclean. I'm talking about, yes, 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 drug addiction. You can't shoot heroin into your temple. You can't snort coke into your temple if you want to be holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's what I'm talking about. We had multiple issues. There's a whole lot of stuff going on. I can give a plethora of stuff that we do to our temples that we're not supposed to. But like most of us, there's an indwelling. There's issues that we got caught up with and we forgot. We simply forgot that our bodies were temples. We think that this is our own body, you know. We tell our kids, listen, boys, you can't get no earrings. Why? Because I said so. This is my body. I can do what I want. You can't get no tattoos. Yes, I can. This is my body. I can do what I want. Girls, you can't, you know, just sleep with Lottie, got in and everybody. Yes, I can. This is my body. I can do what I want. How? How we get caught up in this stuff and forget about God in his temple? I don't know about you, but I've been through some stuff. Yes. I had been through some stuff that made me want to snap, Pastor. I mean, snap ten times. And I began to become bitter and angry. And I had to learn to ask God to take the I, take me, take Stacy out of bitter and make me better. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. Put yes. better on the screen. Yes. Sometimes we got to go through some stuff because of our disobedience. When God told you to let that joker go, but you continue to hold on hold to on him. To now you had to go through some stuff when he uh -huh. knocked you upside your head. Uh -huh. You had to go through some stuff when God told you it was time to move and you didn't move. You stayed on that job when God told you to leave and things began to get uncomfortable. And then you got fired. Why? Because of our disobedience. Just like the people of Israel. We had to go back because of our disobedience. I don't know about you, but I ain't got 40 years to wander around the desert. I got to get this thing right. right. Because God and all of his goodness has given us grace. He has given us mercy. He has given us favor over and over and oh, over oh. again. Listen, God said it. I'll be with you. The glory of the latter will be greater. Yes. Ain't you glad? Somebody say glad. I'm glad. Glad that God isn't like us. He's not an Indian giver. He blesses you and he gives it to you. He don't bless you and take it back. He don't give it to you and take it back. Oh, but everything that he does, he does well. Listen. There are times when we get tired, when we try to make people think that we got it all together. Y'all know how we do. We put on this mask, and I ain't talking about the mask because of Corona. I'm talking about we put on this mask and this fake smile like we got it all together. Like everything is good and wonderful, and everything is just great and peachy, and we just see flowers and rainbows. Praise God. <laughs> Knowing that on the inside, so I say on the inside, we yeah. all jacked up. We hurting. We struggling. God sees what's inside of you. Oh, peekaboo. God sees you. You can hide from the people, but we can't hide from God. And I've come to let you know on a day that you don't have to pretend any longer. No, ma'am, no, sir. They used to tell us, fake it till you make it. You ain't got to fake it no more. You don't have to act like you got it all together. It's okay to say that I'm not okay. It's okay to say that I'm struggling. It's okay to say that I need hope. Yes, I'm going through. Yes, I've been here for a while. Yes, it might be taking me longer than you think it's supposed to take. But don't get it twisted. <laughs> you just got to remember that God is still working on me. Believe it or not, God is doing something in me right now. Come on, tell yourself God is doing something in me right God now. Is God is doing right something now. in me right now. And for some of us, the only time we come to God mm, is when we mess up. I, I 
ain't gonna ask you to raise your hand because I can't see you anyway. But you know we only come to God when we mess up. Uh -huh. We only come to God when we broke down and beaten. We only come to God when we in trouble. Oh, but it's gonna be okay. Ooh, just remember, don't get it twisted. It's gonna be okay. There's a lesson that we have to learn that some of us had to learn more than once. And sometimes we get a little more lessons than others. And sometimes we got to learn how to be submissive. Yes, submissive. We got to learn how to be patient. Oh, patience is a virtue. We got to learn how to be quiet. Be quiet. Learn endurance and learn to wait. And I know that waiting can be difficult. Y'all know that. Pastor talked about it last week or so about how waiting can be difficult. But the Bible tells us, my God, that all things work together for the good of them that what? For the good of them that love the Lord that are called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. So I need you to minister to yourself on today. God, I need you to rebuild me. God, I need you to break me down and take away all this crap. God, I really don't need the things that the world has to offer. God, all I need is you. Come on. Everything is happening is ordained by God. Yes, the stuff you've gone through. Yes, some stuff happened and it wasn't okay, but it's going to be all right. Those areas in your life, God had to bring you through it so that you could get stronger. God had to bring you through it so that you know that you could handle it, that you could deal with it. God used every little thing, every area to tear you down so that he can rebuild you. Yes, you. So stop crying about what happened. Stop worrying about what happened. Stop beating yourself up about what happened. God can use that, yes, for his glory. Yes, you know what I'm talking about. Those things that make you cry at night. Those things that you can't share with nobody else. Those things that you had to go to therapy about. Stop crying over it. God is using it uh, to show you just how strong he made you. He's using you to be a witness for somebody else. So don't get it twisted, devil. You can't hold me hostage to my past. No, you can't. No, you can't. And everything isn't the devil. Sometimes it's just you. Yup, it's me. It's me. Yeah, it's me. Thought you had it all together. Thought you could handle it all. A lot of stuff happened and it wasn't right. It's not right, but guess what? It's going to be okay. Be admit right. you ain't right. <laughs> admit, admit you don't have it all together. But the good thing is, is knowing that God got you. In spite of everything that you've been through, everything right. that you've gone through. Just like in the book of Haggai, they went through stuff, but they knew that everything was messed up. But God was going to rebuild them. God was going to put them back together again. And that's just what he's going to do for you. God is greater. Don't you know? Don't you know that God is greater than any problem? God is greater than any hurt that you've been through. God is greater than any situation that you've been through. You may be asking God, why? Why am I going through this? Why am I going through all these changes? Why am I going through all these problems? Why am I going through a season of hurt? Why I'm going through a season of confusion. <laughs> yes, yes, he only gives his strongest issues to his strongest warriors. So when you feel like you're going through and you don't know how you're going to make it, put your fists up and say, I'm a survivor I'm a because survivor. you know God is going to bring you out. God, 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 God will bring you out. Just like my sister Fantasia said, what don't kill you will only make you strong. So if it didn't kill you, guess what? That means you're strong. You're getting stronger every day. You're getting stronger through every challenge. You're getting stronger through every issue. Yeah. You're getting stronger through every problem. Yeah. You're getting stronger through every issue. Listen, God is working on you. He's working in you. He's working with you so that he can get the glory. Yes, God wants the glory. He's going to rebuild you. He's going to use you. He's going to use that stuff that the world can't offer. Listen, we think we got it together. We think we doing self-care when we shopping for new shoes, when we getting some new stuff. Oh, I feel like I will feel better if I go to the mall. Oh, I'll be all 
alright if I have a little drink. I'll be alright if I smoke a little weed. I'll be alright if I had a companion. Oh, I'll be alright if I had a boyfriend or a girlfriend. I'll be alright if I had a little this or a little that. But none of these things are going to pick your spirit up. None of these things are really going to help. All of it is temporary. And if you depend on those things, listen, depression is going to come back. Loneliness is going to come back. Sadness is going to come back. But when you depend totally on God, when you give it all to God, for those of you that might be thinking, oh my God, she's talking about me. I came to tell you that even if you don't think everything you, even if you don't have everything that you want, God will give you just what you need. It's some stuff that we wanted, but we didn't need. It's some stuff that we should be grateful that God didn't give it to us. God only going to give you what he can use to get the glory out of. So once, once, once you stop hiding and pretending like you got it all together and stop trying to deal with it alone and lean into your own understanding, you're not strong enough to go through it on your own. But if you allow God to come, God will show up. God will show up. God will bring you through it. And God will get the glory. Listen, how many of us got a story to tell? Listen, I know you got a story. And you don't know my story. I heard the preacher say, you see my glory, but you don't know my story. Well, thank God I don't look like what I've been through. Thank God you don't look like what you've been through. Thank God you don't look like you used to look. Thank God you don't feel like you used to feel. Thank God you don't do the things that you used to do. Don't worry about your past. God is going to get the glory. God is going to rebuild you. And God is going to make you better. Just as soon as you open up your mouth to talk about his goodness. Just as soon as you open up your mouth to tell people how good God is. That's when they start looking at you. That's when they start to bring up your past. You'll be able to stand up and say that I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continue to be in my mouth. Yes, you were supposed to see me when I was jacked up. Yes, you were supposed to see this old temple. Yes, you were supposed to see when I was busted and broke down. But I still didn't have it all together. But I got my praise. I got my praise. Listen, don't you know that your praise controls the atmosphere? Yes, it does. How many of you know that you were chosen to change the atmosphere? You can walk into the room full of sad people. Kaboom, sunshine in the room. Your praise. It's changing the atmosphere. You can walk into your job. You can walk into your home. You can walk into your room. And you can tell that something is off. But guess what? The praiser is here. Guess what? The breaker is here. Guess what? My temple is a temple of praise. So I can change the atmosphere. Listen, don't let the enemy steal your praise. Don't let no man, woman, boy or girl, chick or child steal your praise or stop your praise. You got the authority. Somebody say, I got the authority. I got the authority to call on God's glory. I got the authority to go into his presence. Oh, you can't hook up with Jesus. You can't hook up with God. You can't hook up with all this glory and come out with nothing. When he shows up, when he shows up, things got to change. Call him and watch he show up. Hey. You know how as little kids and we get in trouble, you be like, oh, I'm going to get my mommy. I'm going to get my daddy. And you know if you call mommy, she shows up. When you call on your daddy, he shows up. But better than your birth parents. I'm talking about our heavenly father. When I call him, he's going to show up. Some of us have made mistakes and people be calling you by your mistake. It's time for you to stop allowing people to hold you to your past. Right now, today, I am not my past. I am not what I've done. And ask God to release you from it, to wipe it from your memory. And don't allow people to hold you to the things of the past. That's not who I am. That's not what I am. I am a child of God. They used to call me a hoochie. They used to call me a thot. They used to call you a streetwalker.
motherfucker. They used to call you a liar. They used to call you a thief. But that's not who I am no more. I'm not a backbiter. I'm not two-faced. I'm not a thief. I'm not a troublemaker. I don't talk out of both sides of my mouth. I'm who God says that I am. It's time to stop allowing people to bring you down. It's time to stop allowing them to steal your joy. Oh, when you begin, when they begin to throw your past up in your face, uh, tell them, oh, don't get it twisted. <laughs> Say it with an attitude, like you're from the bottom. <laughs> oh, don't get it twisted. I'm not who I used to be. I'm not the old me. I'm not the messed up me. Yes, I had to go through. Yes, I was broken. Yes, I was torn down. But then God came and got me. God filled his temple with his glory. This is the new me. This is the new new. This is the new you. Just call me new new. <laughs> Cause see the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. I heard a preacher say that my comeback is greater than my setback. But like L.L. -L said don't call it a comeback. Because I never left. I was just messed up. But now I've been through some major transitions. Think about it the last year or two. You've been through some major transitions in your life. And you found out that everything wasn't the way you wanted to be. You found out that you was expecting something and it didn't happen. But God, but God is going to fix it for your favor so that he can get the glory. Listen, saints of the most high, we are kill your people and everybody's not going to understand no they just don't understand they just won't understand you and sometimes we don't even understand ourselves the brokenness is only for a season my god watch the old you be destroyed you gonna wake up one day and be like oh god when did he change me oh god i don't do the things i used to do oh god i thank you i don't say the things that i used to say you gotta know that it's God, that's God that's in me, that's God that's with me, it's God that has revealed himself to me. So don't get it twisted. This is the year of the breakthrough. We used to say I'm on the brink of a breakthrough, but this is the year of my breakthrough. Oh, don't get it twisted. I know I'm about to get double anointed. I know I'm about to get the double portion. I know I'm about to get the double mantle. I know I'm about to get the double blessing, the double power, and the double praise. Double for your trouble? God, I thank you for double for my trouble. This is my new praise. This is the praise of the new temple. This praise was birthed out of pain. Don't get it twisted. This pain has produced power. Oh, I'm about to cross over into the ladder. I'm about to cross over into my destiny. Destiny is upon us, and we're about to cross over. We're about to walk into it. So don't miss it. Don't miss it. To all my brothers and sisters that might be hurting, people might be with you. You might have been messed up on the inside. You had your hurt heart. You had your feelings hurt. You had some stuff that nobody knew about. But I came to let you know, don't get it twisted. God is about to break you. Let him take it out of you. Let him destroy you so that he can rebuild you. In my closing, Woo! in my closing, my God has given us purpose today to encourage you to let you know you got to affirm oh my god be strong woman of god be strong man of god and can and affirm be strong for i am god and i am with you come on say it to yourself he is God and he is with me. Oh, this gospel, the gospel which Jesus has built a church. The church is not just the four walls. We are the church. I am the church. And secondly, you got to anticipate that God is about to bless you with anticipation. Ecclesiastics 7 and 8 says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. 
And patient in the spirit is better than the proud in the spirit. So we got to anticipate that God is doing a new thing in us. Anticipate that God is doing a new thing in you. And lastly, motivation. Get motivated to get started. Get motivated not to give up. Woo, Bishop Chase coined the phrase, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready to be blessed. Get ready to be happy. Get ready to have joy. Oh, saints of the most high, don't get it twisted. Oh, you about to get paid for all that you've been through. You paid a price for your anointing. Yes, you did. Yeah. You paid a price for your joy. Yeah. You paid a price for your praise. Just watch God. Watch him get the glory out your life. Tell him don't get it twisted. Because my latter shall be greater than my former. I'm your girl, Pastor Stacy. <laughs> and I've come to encourage you today. That your latter shall be greater. Don't get it twisted. God bless. said a prophet is due his honor. The Bible says that. A prophet is due his honor. She's due her honor. She gave it all. She left it all on the floor today. She brought it and she left it right for you. Listen, be a blessing, be a blessing. You'll see it on Facebook. Uh, you'll see it on Instagram. Then you can go to Cash App. You can go to uh, uh, PayPal. We setting up the Zelle for you to reach that as well. Uh, I didn't mean to make that wrong. But I'm telling you, the more you give, the more you receive. Scripture says that God loves a cheerful giver. Oh, and it's good. And let me tell you something. What, what you do to give, it goes to places needed. It helps us to be able to keep building. It helps us to be able to be inside of a building so we can be amongst people, so that we can push new hope, we can help the growth of new hope, and then we can become the church that God wants us to be in this day and time that we live in. Listen, let me tell you, help me right now and just give Pastor Stacy a round of applause, give us some love, give us some hearts, give us some likes, give us you know, and just tell her thank you, because this word was on point. The pastor gave her her all, and she gave you everything that she had. I hope you receive it in the spirit in which it was given, and I pray that you be blessed. Uh, now, until our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide, now and forever. I want you to know if you don't have a church home and you're looking for a church home, right down home and say new hope, new hope, new hope. You be blessed. God's grace. Bye.